Hello and welcome to episode 27 of the Chess.com Rapid Rating Climb series. This episode's a little bit different because there's going to be two games. Reason being is because I actually was just recording an episode and I blundered on like move 10 and just had to resign. Um, and it was a very short video and I thought there was no point just having like what 15 minutes like you know maybe six minutes for the game and then six minutes worth of analysis because I like to do long form videos and I think you guys enjoy that too of course I will take you through the game though I'm not trying to like hide anything here we're gonna go through the game and then we'll play a second game which hopefully won't end in like 10 moves and if you're new to the channel my name is Alex and this series is basically just me trying to get 2000 ELO on chess.com rapid and explaining my thought process while I play. And then in the post game analysis, we'll be going over some of the ideas that I was talking about in the game, seeing where the computer criticizes some of my moves and why, because it's no good just saying, oh, computer says plus 0.7. You have to realize why, right? And that's what the post-game analysis is for. And hopefully you guys can find it educational and maybe even enjoyable. So let's just take you through this game real quick. We have E4, C6, C4, which is a very strange version of the Cairo Khan. I'm not going to delve into it massively because it's this is not the main focus of the video. D5 takes, takes, takes. I could take here with the queen. But I instead go for knight to f6, which is a bit more accurate because white can't hold on to the pawn. We have knight f3 takes, knight c3, knight b6. And my idea was to try and play against this isolated d-pawn by having massive control over the d5 square, which is how you're supposed to play against an isolated pawn, stopping it from advancing so it can't trade itself off so it becomes a weakness later on in the game. d4, e6 a4, a6, and my opponent kicks my knight into the center. Bishop c4, and I go bishop to b4 with the idea of pinning this knight so that he can't take me and force me to take with a pawn, because I want to keep this square occupied by one of my pieces, because if a pawn goes there, then this pawn is no longer as vulnerable because I have no file to attack it down, because a pawn is in the way. So that was why I played bishop b4. My opponent went bishop to d2, and here I should just castle. And if my opponent takes me, then the computer wants me to do this. Force the bishop back, give a check. Oh, so bishop e2 is better. Rook e8, castle. But see, I took here on a5 because I thought, oh, if he takes me, then I take on d2 with check. And then I take, and then I'm just up a pawn. That's true. Except my opponent found rook a5. And after I played the move bishop a5, I saw rook a5 and I was like, oh, please don't find that. And the issue is, if I take with the queen, then knight d5 comes with an attack on my queen. And my opponent has two minor pieces for the rook. So if I retreat my queen, he just saves his knight. And it's two pieces for rook. And if um, my position was a bit more developed, I might have tried to play this on. But because my opponent's pieces are so active in my position, I literally have no pieces out. I, I really didn't fancy playing this, to be honest. And I thought it would kind of just be over pretty quickly. So that was that game. And, you know, in the sake of for the sake of transparency, I thought I would show it regardless. Makes a bit of a dent in our run to 2000 ELO, but prolongs the series a bit because when we do hit 2000 ELO I'm not sure what I'm going to do maybe I'll just start another one uh anyway anyway let's get into the I guess actual game or second game however you would prefer to see it all right so the main game of the episode we are playing Kiwi Stoic from New Zealand yeah New Zealand um I mean it, it looks like the Oz the uh, Aussie flag or New Zealand, but because he's got Kiwi in his name, like it's quite obvious. And he's very high rated at 2066, and he plays c5. So you guys know what I'm going to play. We have the a3 Sicilian. Oh, yeah. And if you check some of the, um, the videos in the playlist link below, this 
video will be added to a playlist of games that I have played in the A3 Sicilian on the channel, as well as the rapid rating climb playlist, which if this is your first episode, then like feel free to check the others out, but also just watch this one in isolation. Our opponent doesn't go into any of the gambit lines, which involve knight to c6, b4, gambiting the b-pawn, or e6, b4, gambiting the b-pawn. I'll go a little bit more in depth with that in the post-game analysis, but again, there's plenty of videos of, on my channel with my opponents accepting the gambit, so I don't want to speak massively about it, especially if you've watched a lot of my videos already. So he goes d6, which is by no means a bad move, and we are just going to develop normally. And one of the problems with the a3 Sicilian is that if your opponent doesn't play into the gambit line, he can try and argue, bro, you just wasted a whole move on a3. And therefore, because chess is a debate, essentially, we have to try and argue, no, the a3 move is actually useful. And the way we're going to do that is by dropping our bishop to a2 especially in response to e6, because my opponent wants to play d5, and I don't want d5 to come with a tempo on my bishop. If my bishop had retreated to b3, then you could argue it might be vulnerable to moves like c4, or like knight c6 and a5. So our argument is a3 actually provides a, like a bit of a hidey hole for the bishop, and therefore is a good move. Right? Because otherwise we have literally wasted a move, because we are not playing b4 anymore. So bishop e7, my opponent is just developing. We're going to go d3. And our idea is if he plays d5, we are going to play e5 most likely to attack his knight. Yes, that locks our bishop out of the game, but we can potentially try and build a pawn chain like this and transfer the bishop onto this diagonal in the long run. Again, I know it's in the long run, but his bishop is also blocked out of the game if he goes d5, e5, so there is that. Here I want to play f4. This is kind of reminiscent of a grand pre attack in the Sicilian, which starts with like, I think um, e4, knight c3, f4. I think that's the starting setup of the grand pre. So this is quite similar. Not exactly the same, but similar. Knight to f3 looks like a good move. We're going to play it. And yeah, again, d5, we're going to meet with e5 to attack his knight. Queen c7. We always have to keep an eye out whether knight b5 is a good move, especially now the queen is on c7. But here, not really. Not really. We're just going to castle. Bishop e3 might look like a natural move, but the problem is knight g4 attacks the bishop. So we don't want to allow that. Now we could put the king on h1 and play bishop e3 and in response to knight g4 go bishop g1. But then the bishop is pointing towards the queen side and I want the bishop to point towards the king side because that's where I want my focus to be. If we can pull off the move f5 or e5 successfully at some point, it's probably going to be good for our position. I'm going to start with king h1 just to safeguard our king because i'm not exactly sure how i want to set my pieces up yet likelihood is i'm going to play knight back to e2 which i think i'm going to do now and play knight back to e2 because we've kind of resigned to the idea that d5 is happening that's what our knight was defending and we're like look you're going to play d5 we get it but then we're going to push right so my knight will be better served elsewhere Playing knight to e2 also allows us to play c3, which helps to support the dark squares in the center so we can potentially play d4 in the future, right? And like I was saying, building up this pawn chain and transferring the bishop is a potential idea. So c3 looks like a very natural move to me. And I mean, we have a very strong grip of a lot of the central squares with our pawn mass in the center. Our opponent is aiming more towards the queen side, as you can see from his space advantage over here. But we have a bit more space in the center because of e4 and f4. Now, what we don't want to do is we don't want to overextend. We don't want to put these pawns forward at the wrong moment because then they will turn into weaknesses. You need to time this correctly. 
So for now, you know, they'll just sit on e4 and f4. And they can sit there for a long time, and that is absolutely fine. We need to wait until the correct moment to send them forward. So, rook d8. Queen c2 is kind of tempting. Mm. Queen e1 is a common idea. Which I'm going to play. Again, rook d8 supports d5, but we're just going to meet d5 with e5 again with an attack on the knight. I'm playing queen e1 because I want to transfer the queen to the king side via a square like g3. And as long as knight to h5 isn't a problem, which here it isn't because we can meet that with queen g4 or queen h5, sorry, queen h3, forcing the knight to either be defended or retreat, then we're good. So this is a very common idea. Like this diagonal is too blocked up for our queen to use and our knights are well placed there anyway. So we can get our queen onto the dark squared complex and when the f1 is pushed like this you can transfer the queen through the f2 square onto the king side. Again this this isn't like that reminiscent of a gambit opening because we weren't actually able to play the gambit. Oh c4. Sorry I've yeah we weren't able to play the gambit we're playing like a slow strategically sort of minded game here c4 is an interesting move though so my opponent's point is yes this hangs a pawn but if i take here i guess he's going to take there if we try and play e5 then takes 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 don't think we have anything wait there 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 bishop f4 bishop d6 d4 knight c6 that's no good Whew. okay i guess my opponent's arguing that queen e1 is a bad move because my queen used to defend the d3 pawn. Now, no longer does. And he might have something, like, the, the, there's probably some truth to that. So, yeah, he's undermining our pawn chain, which is a very smart move. I somehow feel like we should have something here, though. Because, like, we could bail out with this, and we're going to end up on equal material. But I don't like the fact that the e4 pawn falls. Like, that doesn't sit well with me. I'm trying to make this work, but... It just doesn't. So, okay, what happens if we take on c4? If we take on c4 and he takes back, then we can just defend the e4 pawn. So if we take on c4 and then he takes on e4, then we can take on b5 and he takes back on b5. Then we can play knight to d4, which opens up an attack on the knight with our queen. He can take here so he can open up the defense of his bishop. Knight takes. Then b5 is under threat. We're going to go into this. I feel like we don't really have another option but to take on c4. Which is annoying, but because you know we're not going to get the attack that we wanted now. But this isn't necessarily good for him. Like, yeah, it stops us from attacking. He takes back on c4. That's surprising. That's really surprising. Because can I not just go knight g3 now? As long as he can't access the d3 square with a knight, I think we're good. Knight g3 defends e4 twice, and we're preparing the move f5. Knight g3 d5. e5 knight d7. Okay, knight g3 d5. F5. 
No, I don't think so. But I think knight g3 is the move. This has to be the move. Because the queen and the knight now both support this, and the knight supports a potential f5 push. I don't think it's that big of a problem if he gets d5 in, because if we play e5, right, and we can transfer this bishop to b1, then this diagonal could become really strong, especially if this knight is kicked out of f6 and no longer defends the h7 square. That could be very nice, and if we can pull f5 off, then we have an attack going. So, okay, this... Is not so bad anymore. So like I was saying, you know, our opponent being able to play c4 and pull c4 off tactically doesn't necess isn't necessarily good. Yes, it stops our initial plan, but okay. So knight a5 is aimed at b3. If he gets into b3, we are probably just going to take him. We don't have to, though. Can't play bishop e3, because then e4 hangs. There, there, there. And our bishop can't move anywhere useful. If we go bishop d2, knight b3, can we play rook d1? I don't mind giving this bishop up. Okay, that looks alright. I'd like to bring this rook into the game. Might not be the best idea. Also weakens the b2 square. Kind of just waiting on him to go d5. I mean, in this position, f5 was a move, for sure. But if he takes and knight takes, then um, e4 could hang. I feel like this knight needs to go somewhere else. Like maybe d4. But then he could try and play e5. This knight on e4 does control b3 though. Maybe I should have done that on the last move. Hmm, I will note that down. Move 16. Instead of bishop d2, could have maybe played knight d4. So we'll look at that afterwards. Okay, he goes rook b8, lining his rook up with b2. So knight d4 can maybe be played. We could also play rook d1. Knight d4... I'm not sure... We're going to go rook d1. We're going to go rook d1. Just to get the rook out of the corner. Knight b3 now no longer comes with an attack on the rook. Yeah, this is kind of weak. But how does black exploit that? If he goes for a move like bishop to um, a8, opening up the attack. Then we could play bishop back to c1. And if he goes knight b3... Well, we're not going to play rook b1, obviously, so bishop c1 it is. If he goes knight b3, we could take with the bishop. It's a move. If he takes with the pawn, I think that's good for us, so I'd expect him to take with the rook. Then knight d4 comes with tempo on the rook, so say rook back to b8.
Then maybe f5. e5, keeping things sharp. Then d6 could be a problem. I don't know where we're going to put our knight there. Because he has massive control over d5, so he's going to play d5 regardless. We'll see what he plays. I mean, knight b3 is what you would, you would expect. But in response to knight b3, we could play queen e2. So after he takes on c1 and we take with the rook, the queen defends the b2 square from e2. Also puts pressure on c4, actually. Hmm, I don't mind that. c4 is kind of difficult to defend unless he plays d5. In which case we're going to go e5 and go for f5, like we said. And the difference is, playing f5, he can go e5. But if we have d5, e5 included, then after f5, he can't push e5. You know what I mean? Like, we forced the line open there. So he's, he either has to take us, or we're going to take him. But if we do it immediately, then he has the option to push to e5. If he pushes to e5 before we play f5, then the f5 square is available for us. Because our pawn isn't there. You get what I mean? Like... We don't want f5 to be occupied by a pawn. Because what's it going to do? Just sit there. I'd rather a knight get there. Classic square for a knight to go for an attack. So queen e2 looks nice to me. And if he takes here, we take with the rook. Yeah, we do lose a dark squared bishop. But our knights are going to get really good, I think. And I think this bishop is better served existing than this bishop. Especially because c4 is weak. So we're going to go queen e2. So not use too much time. Defending b2. You could argue it's a flimsy defense. But yeah, whatever. Whatever. We can always bring like a rook to the second rank if we need. Or if we start going for an attack, we could maybe sacrifice the b2 pawn. So okay. If you take like I would rather him not be able to take on c1. But we don't have that luxury. And I'd rather him have my dark squared bishop than my light squared bishop. The thing is though, like I say, if he takes on c1 and we take back, then c4 is quite weak. c4 is weak. If he goes d5, then we go e5, and then I'm happy. He could play rook c8. I don't know if I like that from him though. I don't know. Could maybe play hmm like this. This preparing this. Maybe we no, we just bring the C rook. What am I on about? The C rook isn't doing anything. Again, I don't want to play F5 because he's gonna play E5, so I don't want to go E5 because he now can bring his knight to d5 after the trade. Whereas if he goes d5 first and then e5, then he can't bring his knight there. Could also play rook c2, actually. I like rook c2. Because we can do like this, right? But I think I would rather play rook c2 than d2. Because it leaves the option open for the rook to go somewhere else if we want. And also we get rid of the problem of b2 being undefended immediately. Rather than having to spend a second move before it's defended by a rook. Because so I don't want my queen to defend a pawn. Like that's a very low value task for such a high value piece to be doing. Like I'd rather the queen be off attacking or something. Making herself useful. Whereas a rook, I don't mind so much if one rook has to defend a pawn. Because it is also being attacked by a rook, so that's kind of equal, you know. His rook is keeping my rook dormant. But that's fine, because he's using a whole rook to do that. And my rook can also transfer into the game at any point, while maintaining a defense. It's okay. 
We've got equalish time, which is very, um, very strange for the rating climb. I'm normally down like a ridiculous amount of time, so that's a nice change. And yeah, the thing is, I I want him to play d5 so that I can go for this idea of e5 f5. But if he just doesn't do that, like it's kind of difficult. What is that move? I mean, he's threatening to take. Okay. What if we go knight d4? Or knight d2? Defending and attacking. And again, I want him to play d5 so I can push. Ooh, knight d2 actually. And that kind of makes rook c2 a good move because previously I wanted to play knight d2 but I couldn't because it cut my queen's connection off to b2. But now that's fine because the rook attacks there. Knight d2, how does he defend c4 unless he plays d5? Then we push and this we take take and yeah we don't win the pawn but the pawn's incredibly weak queen c6 is that a problem knight d2 queen a4 attacking the rook can't we just take on c4 everything looks defended to me Let's go knight d2. I feel like this forces d5, which is exactly what we want. d5, e5, knight d7. We could even bring the knight back to f3 to get it into d4 if we want. But the whole point is that f5 is on the cards now. Whereas previously f5, e5, like I explained many, many times. I need d5 on the board so that I can go e5 then f5 this is how i'm trying to break through c4 is kind of weak it really is kind of weak i mean i was surprised back on the um back on this move after takes i was surprised he didn't take on e4 this looked like a strange move to me all the way back then now maybe we're showing that it wasn't the best idea from him Queen a4 seems like the most logical move to me. Well, not logical. It seems like what I think he's going to play. Because after knight c4, he could try and argue that my queen is overloaded with the amount of things she's defending. But she isn't really. Because... What is she? No. Because this queen is attacking both of these and my queen is defending both of these. And if my queen ever has to take on e4, then she will maintain control over c2 and c4, which is where my pieces might end up, right? Again, this feels very flimsy from, from black to try and play queen a4. So, surely d5. My opponent's spending a lot of time here, which is probably smart. But I do not understand queen c6. I do not understand queen c6. Like, yeah, you're attacking this, but it's not that difficult to defend. Maybe he wanted me to play e5. Like, then it would make sense, but I'm not going to play e5 until you play d5. This is the thing, like, it's just a standoff, this position, because I won't push. Like, basically, I want to push, but I will only push if he pushes first. He wants to push to control this, but he won't push because then I'll push, right? And he wants me to push this so that he can push this, but he won't push this until I push this because he wants f5 to be like, he, like he wants the f5 square to have a pawn on it rather than a piece because if a pawn is on it, that's not very scary. A knight on f5, that's scary. That's like a classic attacking square, like f4 and f5. 
By the way, my game is just kind of frozen, so let me just fix that real quick. Sorry, it does that kind of often. I'm not really sure why. I just have to refresh the page and it fixes it most of the time. I don't know if you guys have experienced that. Like, your chess.com game kind of just like freezing when you try and click a piece. I don't know, maybe just me. By the way, if you are still watching this video and not yet subscribed, I hope you are finding it valuable or at least entertaining. And if that is the case, I'd appreciate you dropping a like and subscribe on the video to stay updated with the channel because I've really want to grow this channel. I've been really enjoying this so far. And by the amount of like, don't get me wrong, I'm not getting insane amounts of support, but to me it is because I wasn't really expecting anything from this. So yeah, just drop a subscribe if you haven't yet, if you've made it this far in the video. And if you're already subscribed, then thank you very much. I really appreciate you. Opponent's still thinking, down to 3 minutes 30, and he goes d5. Yep. Taking here is just bad. Push, for sure. The knight can't advance to g4, because our queen controls that square. Not like the knight would be doing anything there anyway. To be fair, if the knight goes to e4, we can just take with um, this knight, and after the pawn takes, then c4 hangs. So knight back. Now f5, no? We could do this maneuver first, but if we go knight f3, g6 stops f5. Here, 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 there. No, these sacrifices don't work. So f5 immediately. Now we don't have to take him. Because um, I feel like that only helps him. I'd rather him take me and me take back with the knight. So what we can do is go for this knight maneuver now. After we've played f5. But the problem is, like I said, if we went for knight to f3 first... Then maybe he plays g6 to stop f5. Yeah, that weakens the dark squares, but we don't have a dark squared bishop, remember. He does. So he would not, not easily maybe, but he would be able to defend those dark squares in his position. Wow, he takes. That's bold. That is bold. Okay, so we're going to take with the knight. Beautiful knight now. This bishop surely has to drop back to f8. So that it maintains control over d6. Because you can't let my knight get to d6. That's for sure. And I want to get this knight involved now. Also we'll shut down the move d4. Because if we can do that. It's going to be very difficult for black to get any counterplay. You do have to check this move though. Because it does open up the battery on g2. But our queen defends g2. So we're okay. We are a-okay. And if we can get our knight there. Then we stop any ideas ever. And we may also be able to rotate our bishop back to b1 because it's currently blocked in. And on b1, it'll be a lot more useful on this long diagonal aiming towards h7. Okay, rook e8 does the same sort of job. I d I'm obviously not going to take this because my knight is amazing. So, knight f3 and knight d4 looks very, very logical. I was just checking whether we could sack and try and play like bishop f7, king f7 and go for like a discovered check and win the queen. Wait, knight c4, sorry, I know we can just go for the whole knight f3 thing, but I need to check this line. Knight c4, d c4, bishop c4. I'm going to make a note of this, by the way. Knight c4, d c4, bishop c4. We are attacking a6, but we don't care about a6. What does he do? Ah, he can take on e5. And our queen can't take because g2 hangs with mate. So, yeah, we're not going to go into that. But I am going to check it in the post-game analysis, because obviously we don't have to take the knight back. 
but the knight's also attacking our bishop, so that seems like it was a problem. That's an interesting idea, and I'll show you, if you couldn't follow my calculation, what I meant. Okay, yeah, knight c5, he wants to try and access these squares, which makes sense. But the knight is no, now no longer really defending his position. So, okay, we can bring our knight into d4 with tempo. Blocks this off, also supports this knight, which is useful. I mean, we have a very good position. This knight also controls e6, which might be useful in trying to stop us from playing d6 at a good moment. Although this is a good position, there's no obvious way through, right? So this is still going to be hard work. Our opponent is definitely not going to make it easy. Yeah, queen to g6, logical. I want to, tr I want to put my bishop on b1. Very badly. But he might go for knight to e4 to block the diagonal off. This is a tempting move to try and bring my rook over and play bishop b1. Also pressuring d5. I mean, the bishop defends it, but try and stop it from rerouting itself, maybe. It is really out of the game, though. Very out of the game. There, there. Could we take? And play like maybe rook e1 or rook f sorry e2 or f2 hmm opponent is doing well doing well Sorry, I'm just thinking a bit. He is low on time, though. And I need to try and maintain my time advantage. What about rook f3, rook g3? Rook f3, queen h5? Knight g3, queen there, knight there. I'm going to go rook f3. I think that is a nice move. That might even be the critical move. Because all the ideas I was calculating, they involved trying to bring these pieces over to the attack essentially, right? But if I try and spend too long transferring my pieces, my opponent's going to do exactly the same thing. And he might try and create some problems for me in the center and on the queen side. Now, knight e4 is a move which stops, stops this. Because he takes it, obviously. But knight e4... Do we have anything? We can actually take on c4. Oh no, we can't. Sorry, I was going to say the pawn was overloaded, but the bishop also helps the defense. So, okay. Knight e4. Stops rook g3. Ah, he plays this. So, wait. But rook g3, and if he takes my queen, I take here with check. Then his king moves, then I take back, and then I'm just up a p. Sorry, up a pawn. Right? I'm not missing anything. Oh my god! Knight h6. Fork in the king and the queen. G takes, rook g3, pins the queen to the king. 
Knight H6? I was thinking about the... So basically, I was thinking about this, 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 the, and then King H8, Knight F7. But then what if I switched up the move order, I thought? Knight H6 first. He has to take, then Rook G3. And we win the Queen. Yeah. <laughs> Yo. Knight to h6. Yeah, the queen's dead. The queen's dead. You have to take that. Now, the game isn't over. Because he will have a rook and a bishop for the queen. But his king should be weak enough, especially with knight to f5 coming, that we should be able to continue attacking him. Although this knight can infiltrate, which is kind of annoying. We should still be able to convert this, though. Okay, I want to play this, just to defend g3. Yeah, it is not over yet. It's not over. Could go here. Bishop f8. Queen g4, king h8. The attack doesn't quite work. So let's just go king h2 to defend g3. e5 could become weak, but... If he plays a move like bishop to f8 to attack e5, then we could play queen to h5. We need to try and get this bishop back into the game. Okay, that attacks that and stops queen h5 from defending it. That's a good move. We could push and force him to take with the pawn. Does that benefit us? I don't know, because then e5's coming, and e5 is scary. So, no, we're not going to allow that. Got to be accurate. Got to be accurate. What about just knight f3? Yeah, let's just go knight f3. Defend e5, attack the bishop. Are we going to take the bishop, given the opportunity? I don't know, because then we're going to fix his pawn structure. Although the pawn's still weak anyway. So yeah, given the opportunity, we should take the bishop. Although, if we take the bishop, then e5 is weak again. So maybe not. We're just trying to stop his threats to give us some time to consolidate our position because like I say we need to get this bishop out rook b6 okay guess he's trying to play rook g6 to go after g3 We're low on time, so is he. If we take and pawn takes, I don't like that. His knight is really annoying. Oh my god, I've got such low time. This is not good. He's playing this well. He's really making us work for this. Rook g6 is surely the move. Surely. I mean, if g3 falls, it's not the end of the world, but I don't really want it to fall. I'm trying to move my rook. If 
here, he could take here. And then if here, then he has this discovered jack. Oh, wait, no, but if he takes, then we just take with the queen. So, okay, let's play rook e2. Then we want to play bishop b1. Yeah, knight takes g3, queen takes g3. We're good. I think we're handling this well. He's about to run out of time. Okay, he goes for that. Cool. Um, let's do this. Can't do that because we take the rook. If he takes with the rook, then we take the knight and remove the defender. Wait. There, 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 there. That's winning. That's winning. If he takes here, then we take with the bishop. That should be game over now. Bloody hell, he made us work for that. Wow. Yeah. Then we should take back with the bishop. And now we are up a lot of material. He's still playing. I guess because we're low on time. Let's go queen d1 to go after this pawn. Gives a check. g3. You can take this if you want. Yeah, but now you're pinned. Let's take this. Oh, did I just blunder? Here, 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 here. But we should win queen versus rook. Queen versus rook is a win. Let's do it. Give a check. Then we're going to come back to d4 with check. Where's he going to go? I'm trying to pick the rook up with check, but I don't think I can do it. If we take here, rook takes, we can win this. I would rather do it. I'd rather do it like this though. Here, 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 instead of going here, 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 just because my queen ends up more central and I can get more checks in more easily from c4. Yeah, h6 is hanging, but we don't want h6. Yeah, let's take. Our king is completely safe because he's only got a rook. Like, a rook can only do so much. The queen is far more deadly. Because the rook has no supporting pieces. Yeah, we still we, we still have to be a little bit accurate here, but this should be an easy cleanup now. And we just charge this pawn down the board. The king can't get over there in time. Our king stops these pawns anyway because, I mean, they're split for a start, but they're also way too far away. Okay, I assume we just push. Let's go. We can deliver checks anytime we want. Let's attack the rook with the king. We could even possibly sack the uh, queen for the rook at some point. I don't know why he's still playing on, but... We're going to be cheeky. We're going to play queen d4. I'm trying to set up a5, rook a5, and queen d8 winning the rook. Let's go here. Let's 
let's go here. He might try this to win the queen. But if he goes here, I mean, we could be fancy and push and sack the queen, but I think easier is just to go queen d8. We defend not only h5, but we defend a5 as well. So now we push. He has no checks. I mean, surely he resigns now. Surely. <clears throat> wow. Knight h6. What a move. Slave so always got to watch your tactics. The thing is, in that position, if you knew there was a tactic, like if you were told this is a chess puzzle, you'd find that tactic quite easily, I think. But without knowing, it's a lot more difficult. Okay, I, d I don't know why he's still playing. Let's just check him. I don't know where he's going. Throwing another check. Dude, come on. It's a queen for a rook, man. Really? You really want to play this on? <laughs> come on, bro. I'm not going to blunder anything that obvious. I'm not going to go like here. I mean, it'd still probably be winning to be fair, but my pawn's so close. Let's just go here. Rook a4 maybe. Then we just give a check and push. So our queen defends a7. Come on, man. You don't need to spend this long. No disrespect, but like it's game over. Okay. Let's throw in a check. I want to see this so I can play this to fork the king and the rook. Okay, I guess not. Let's just push. And if he goes like this, we're going to go queen to e8 check, king moves, and then we're going to promote because the queen's now going to defend. He can give a spike check first, but force the rook to move, give a check. And then we promote. And then he should resign. There we go. All right. Very cool game. Very interesting. Really nice sacrifice, but I feel like I misplayed the opening a bit. Let's get into the game analysis. All right, so I got 88.3% accuracy, my opponent with 85.5, so very close. We both played very well overall, but made a few mistakes each. And I mean, the game was very complicated, so that makes sense. I'm not going to go over the ideas of the gambit, just because I'm wary of the fact this video is getting very long. But if you do want to check those out, uh, that like, if you do want to learn more about the point of the gambit then check the playlist down below in I think it's like games in the A3 Sicilian just check that out and I'll go more in depth in some of those but just for the sake of time so I don't want this to go massively over an hour we're just going to look at this so d6 knight c3 knight f6 bishop c4 I explained the ideas of this e6 we drop the bishop back bishop e7 d3 Again, my opponent can play d5 if he wants to, but I'm just going to push. And when he drops back, I'm going to play f4, right? And we get similar sort of thing to what we got way later on in the game. I love these pawn structures. Computer says minus 0.2, but like, okay, bro, prove it. So castle, f4, knight c6. Uh, no, sorry, I was just checking my notes to see if I'd missed anything. Knight to f3. Queen c7. A lot of this, I mean, neither of us spent that much time because they're all quite natural developing moves. 
castle, a6, looking to expand. I played king h1, just to step off, off of any shenanigans in the future. b5, and then knight e2. Computer doesn't love it, but I want to do this. Bishop b7, c3, and yeah, c4 here is actually playable. But after rook fd8, queen e1, c4 is the best move. And yeah, after I took took here, I thought he was just going to take on e4. And my plan was to go takes, takes, knight d4, knight d4, knight d4, attack here, put some pressure on the knight. If you play a move like queen b6 defending, I'm, I'm alright. I can play like bishop e3 to try and set up some discoveries. It's not an amazing position, but to be fair, I still have f5 on the cards, and if e5 is played, then my bishop kind of opens up. So it's not that bad, but taking back on c4, I, I didn't love it. Now knight g3 is the best move. There's not really any alternatives to defend here. You could play bishop b1, but then what's the rook doing? I should try and move the rook before I play bishop b1. And it's funny because, did I even play bishop b1 at all? I don't think I did, like, but that was the idea, right? Knight a5. Here apparently I can go f5, but e5 just shuts everything down. Computer wants to develop like this. And if the knight comes in... Take, 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 take. Knight h5, bishop e7, f6. Ah, okay. And then queen g3 makes sense. But that's very difficult to see that far in the future. So I'm not going to beat myself up over it. Again, I would delve a little bit more into it, but I, I, I know this is getting long. <laughs> if you're still with me, then fair enough. Fair enough. Love you. Uh, rook a to b8. I go rook d1. Bishop a8, setting up the attack on b1 and forcing bishop c1. Knight b3. Here I can take. Queen e2 is also the second best choice. I did really consider taking. Like, don't get me wrong, I really did consider this. But it's just difficult to do a whole lot. f5, e5. Queen e2. I feel like my attack's gone. d5 at the right moment could be a problem. And I just don't have anything. I feel like queen e2, while it might not be quite as accurate, Creates more potential chances. So rook dc8. f5 here is apparently a move. And if e5. Yeah again it's just shut down. The computer keeps suggesting f5. But I don't like it. I don't agree with the computer. Because I want to save it for the right moment. Because I can play it at any time. You know. And I think I did. Because after queen 2 c6. Knight d2 it kind of forces d5. And then after e5, the knight could come into e4, but then we take take, and I assume we take on c4. And we're not completely winning, but we're up a fairly clean pawn. Black has a lot of pressure on me, but it's difficult for him to actually make much of it. So d5, e5, knight d7. Here I was considering... Oh wait, let me go back to move 16 real quick. I had a note on that. Yeah, instead of queen d2, bishop d2, sorry, knight d4. Why did I want to go knight d4? Apparently it's a mistake anyway. But if knight b3, then obviously we just win a pawn. So, what's the issue? So I was just picking my pen up. Bishop f8. Now the computer doesn't mind it. Okay, whatever. It's a move. But nothing amazing. Uh, rook c2, queen here, knight d2, d5, e5, knight d7. And here the computer doesn't like f5, which is kind of shocking to me. Queen g4, apparently. Okay, but that doesn't really threaten anything. Like, we're all, we also can't play uh, f5 now because we no longer defend e5. I 
I don't like this from the white side, to be honest. I think the point of knight f3 is to defend e5 and then go f5. But it just feels kind of clunky. I don't know. Maybe it was a better way to go about it, but I liked f5. The reason the computer doesn't like it is because of g6. But then I was just going to go f6 and try and suffocate the black position. That was my idea. And if we can bring our knight to like f3 and d4, then I think we have a very nice position. Despite what the computer says, we can throw this pawn down the h file. I think practically this is good for white. But he takes knight f5, rook e8, knight f3 is bad. I can't believe this position is good for black, by the way. That's insane to me. Knight c5 is bad. Queen g6 was better. But then can we not still do this? Oh, this is kind of hanging. Knight h4? So this computer wants to repeat the position. Eh, whatever. He didn't do that. He went to c5. Here. Here. And we go rook f3. Now, I had considered the move queen f3, which is the computer's favourite. I didn't really know what I was going to do after knight e4 here. Apparently, you can go for this whole bishop b1 idea, but it felt kind of slow to me. It's like bishop f8, apparently knight h4. Oh, you can't do that. f is a problem. Oh, okay. So f7 does become weak if I put my queen there and move my knight at the right moment, and the queen can't go to e6 to defend because of my other knight. I didn't notice that. I played rook f3, as we know, and my points go rook to g3. Now, after knight e4, I thought I might be in a bit of trouble, to be honest. And I, I, mean, I kind of am, but at the same time, it's not bad. I can still go for this whole bishop b1 idea. Okay, here apparently that just hangs a pawn, but I can go like rook c. No, not rook c1. Um, I want the rook to defend b2. So say queen f1. Bring the rook over, bring the bishop over. It's cool. Queen g4, though, is not good. And you know the funny thing? This is not considered a good move. <laughs> Apparently, it was better to go rook g3. And if you take on e2, then do the line that I initially thought I was going to do. Crazy. And the computer would rather just win a pawn. Knight d3 attacks b2. Go e6. Okay. And if you take... Then e7 is a problem. Knight h6 jack is apparently a miss because after gdf6, rook g3, the queen can go to g6. And after you take, black fixes his pawn structure and it's equal. He took. But it's, it's still quite equal, you know. Like I was saying in the game, this is not easy. And this is why it took me so long to try and convert this. After knight e4, my position is kind of stuck. I go king h2 to defend the pawn. Bishop g5, by the way, is a very nice move. That was a really good move. Because I wanted to defend... If a uh, bishop f8, I was looking at moves like queen h5 to defend. And now the computer thinks it's more in my favour. But in a lot of these positions where you have, like, a rook and a minor piece, and, like, a kind of positional advantage for a queen... You have to be incredibly accurate to actually hold on to the position. And the problem is, like, my opponent doesn't have much time, you know? So how is he going to hold on to this position realistically? Also, quickly, I just noticed I missed another move in my notes, which was here instead of knight f3, going knight takes c4, d takes, bishop takes this doesn't work oh my god yeah i can take because my rook covers g2 blind spot so there's only one move to save this position which is bishop f6 
things. Okay. Eh, maybe my opponent would find that. If I take, obviously, I lose my queen. Apparently, is this king takes queen h5 here, here, here? Okay, that's crazy. But sorry, off off topic. Um, let's get back to the position. Bishop g5, knight f3, which yeah, I do need to play knight f3. Rook b6, queen e1. Queen d1 is a little bit better, but I didn't like putting the queen on d1 because I'd rather the queen defend g3. Rook g6, rook e2, bishop d8. Here I can take on c4, and after c takes, play rook takes, bishop takes, queen takes. I guess my knight is just an absolute hero defending e5, and these pawns are incredibly weak, but playing two rooks versus a queen like this, ah, it's difficult to want to do that difficult. I guess the point is that I'm going to win one of the queenside pawns and then my pawn majority over there will be a big problem. But bishop e1 made a lot of sense to me. But yeah, rook g3 just blunders the game. He doesn't have to do anything. He can play like bishop c7. Still, it's a difficult position to me. The computer, whoops, still wants to go for this sort of idea. Which makes a lot of sense, to be fair, but it's hard to play in an actual game. Rook takes g3 though, we just take on e4. Takes my knight, we take with the bishop. If he takes here, then we can take here with check. And then we can save our knight. Even if we give up our knight, I don't, to be honest, I don't think I even saw that this came with check. Even if we give the knight up, it is what, a queen for two bishops. That should be a fairly easy win. At least it didn't open sort of position like this where black's pawns are very weak and mine are kind of strong so anyway we can do it this way bishop g5 queen d1 check and i'm just trying to force trades here and this is not the best line because you can have a rook versus a queen but it keeps it nice and simple i mean the game here is pretty pretty easy there's no need to Delve too deeply into it, but we convert it quite nicely. And yeah, that takes us up to 1950, which I think is kind of where we started the episode, to be honest, considering we lost that first one, which I briefly reviewed. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.